हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग एब्सोल्युटली फाइन सो आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो आफ्टर अ वेरी लॉन्ग ब्रेक ऑफ एट टू नाइन मंथ्स इन बिटवीन आई वाज बिजी इन सम प्रोजेक्ट्स व्हिच इज ऑफ कोर्स फॉर यू ऑल एंड फॉर द फ्यूचर ऑफ होम्योपैथी एंड द थिंग्स व्हिच यू आर वर्किंग ऑन सो आई कूडंट गेट द टाइम टू मेक वीडियोस फॉर यू ऑल बट नाउ सिंस माय एग्जाम्स आर नियरिंग इन डिसेंबर आई एम प्लानिंग टू डिवोट वन टू टू मंथ्स कंप्लीटली फॉर यूट्यूब to make some revision videos for you all and for me as well because i personally have this habit of you know audio visual learning wherein if there is a screen recording going in front of me and i am hearing the same voice again and again i tend to remember it better and produce better results in exams so it is a very important learning method audio visual learning method which we all should try to inculcate and see its beneficial results so today i'll be starting the repertory exam oriented revision series in which we'll be using some repertory notes for revising our topics and revising the important answers which can be asked in exams so i would like to also thank my friend sorrow rockstar pandya for his kind for being very kind and generous enough to share his notes with us all and for helping us in various ways right so now we'll be starting so this is the index which will be covering the different topics which will be covering in the subsequent videos so today the first topic which will be studying and revising for exam is the kent's repertory as we all know kent's repertory is one of the most important repertory of our portion and it is also one of the most important foundation base of our practice as well so people who are thorough with kent's repertory in and out tend to do better in practice are able to find symptoms and symptoms of the patient better in the repertory and in short it helps a lot in practice right so this is a very important repertory now let us look into in detail if a question is asked for 20 markers which all point we should cover for this answer right so now we begin with the answer kent's repertory the full name of the repertory is Kent's repertory of homeopathic materia medica with word index author is of course dr kent and the full name of dr kent is james tyler kent the year of publications with edition this is very important for us to remember the first edition was published in 1897 the second in 1908 the third edition in 1924 the fourth one in 1935 the fifth edition in 1945 the sixth edition in 1957 and the first indian edition was published in the year 1961 so i just made this small numerical presentation wherein you can remember the numbers 8 24 35 45 50 57 and 61 so this is how you know there is no trick to remember it but if you can repeat it a few times you can of course remember it 1897 1908 1924 1935 1945 and 1957 and the first indian edition was published in 1961 So now let us move ahead. The revised version of Kent was published by Dr. Pierre Schmidt in 1974. Again, very important. But unfortunately, when the book was ready for publication, it was stolen. Dr. Devan Harishan succeeded in salvaging the manuscripts, which was in a which was in a mutilated form. It is generally called revised first edition or final journal repertory of Dr. Kent. Now let's move into the basic answer of this whole gist. so introduction dr jd kent was was an eclectic practitioner when his wife fell ill in 1878 she did not respond either to eclectic or allopathic modes of treatment but was completely cured with homeopathic medicine this converted him to homeopathy and he took up its study he accepted the philosophy and principles of the system and thus turned out to be a true student of hanemann's organon during his time repertories of bonningosen and lippi were commonly used he carefully went through both of them and also bigler's diary minton's diseases of women and jars repertory he liked the form and characteristics in lippi's repertory but he was not satisfied with the rubrics and the number of medicines used his repertory published in 1897 was enriched with a large number of new rubrics and medicines the number of medicines used in the repertory is 648 so we remember the number 648 very important 648 number of medicines are included in the kent's repertory now let us look into the history part so basically when we study these answers 
there is not much to explain in it you know it is just a factual data and something you know which we must uh, read again and again revise and again and again to remember it so there's no tricks and tips here but all you can do is watch this video for one two three times and try to remember maximum number of data which you can reproduce in the paper right so the history part now let's look into the history dr kent used lippi's repertory for a number of years until it was not intervened once but thrice dr kent was dissatisfied with all these work and found them unsuitable in his practice he talked to lee of philadelphia as lippi's abridged form of a new repertory was with lee Lippi had desired that Dr. Kent should work jointly with Lee in producing a comprehensive repertory. At that time, Dr. Kent had completed a repertory of the urinary organs, chill, fever, and sweat. Taking help from Dr. Kent, Lee started working and compiled the mind and head sections. Lee's work was not up to the expectations of Dr. Kent. Later, when Lee became blind, Dr. Kent took it up, revised, and arranged it according to his own plan. After the completion of the work, Dr. Kent started using it for his own purpose. Dr. Kent expressed the difficulty of publishing it on account of the exorbitant cost. At last, Dr. Kimball, Thurston, and Bigler helped him to get enough subscribers to justify the publication. Dr. Borick, president of Borick and Tafel, while referring its publication, said, It is a great and useful thing. Now, let us look into the source of repertory. The source here is very important, and we must remember all the sources. So, the first one is Lippi's repertory. Second, Bigler's diary. Third, Jar's repertory. Fourth, Allen's symptom register. Fifth, Allen's great encyclopedia. And the sixth one, Minton's disease of women. Now, let us look into the philosophical background. So, whenever a repertory is made, there is always a philosophy behind it, a plan of construction behind it, and the methodology and the ideology of the author while making it. So, that includes in the philosophy. And now, we'll be looking into the philosophical background of the repertory. Philosophical background. Dr. Kent was not satisfied with the utility of the repertories available in his time. He found that the logic of the homeopathic system of medicine was not properly followed in finding out a similimum in the repertories. He severely criticized the faulty method of giving importance to the parts and overgeneralization symptoms and favored the selection of medicines on the basis of generals. So the word general is very important while we study Kent's repertory. A master of Materia Medica, he noticed that particulars did not fall in the line with generals in all cases. Hence, he emphasized the importance of generals. So, this box is very important. Kent repertory is based on the philosophy of deductive logic. Deductive logic, that is from general to particular, G to P, general to particular. Under the chapter mind, mental generals are given. The physical generals are mostly listed under chapter general generalities and a few in other chapter. Both chapters are full of generals and these alone can be useful in finding out the similimum in some cases. His repertory contained only 648 drugs. 648. Again, we are revised above but now we revise it again. That there are 648 remedies in the Kent's repertory. He has used three varieties of typography to indicate the gradations of remedy. Now, as we all know and we have studied and seen also in the Kent repertory that there are three gradations, the three mark, the two marks and the one mark symptoms and uh, one mark remedies and they are respectively given as the three mark remedies are given in bold letters, the two marks in the italics and the one mark in ordinary human and the three marks symptoms and the three mark remedies are usually the first grade and the two marks are generally second grade and the one mark remedies are third grade. So now let us look into the gradation of Kent and how Dr. Kent graded remedies and the symptoms. So basically, the first grade symptoms are recorded in majority of provers. They have been recorded, confirmed and verified in majority of all provers. The second grade symptoms are recorded only in few provers. They are not confirmed but occasionally verified. And the third grade symptoms are recorded in very few provers. They are not confirmed by reproving. Plan and construction. Again, we remember G2P, generals to physical, generals to particular, sorry. In Ken's repertory, the plan followed throughout is the form is from general to particulars. General to particular, G2P. It starts with mind chapter, which has been given prime importance. 
The last chapter is generalities, which contains physical modalities. The rest of the chapters are based on anatomical divisions followed by functions or discharges. There are altogether 33 chapters, out of which one out of which one is on urinary organs. This particular chapter has five divisions, so total number of chapters become 37. So 37 33 chapters and the chapter of urinary organs is divided, subdivided into five. So it, it adds up to 37 chapters in total. Anatomical parts. Now different anatomical parts which are also important for us as a practitioner doctor to remember to find out our symptoms and locate them properly in repertory. So the anatomical parts are in head, it contains forehead, occiput, temples, vertex, brain and meninges, throat, esophagus, pharynx, tonsil and uvula, external throat, anterior neck such as goiter, glands, torticollis, chest, lungs, heart, aorta, sternum, mammae, axilla, diaphragm and clavicle. The back consists of cervical, dorsal, lumbar, lumbar sacral, cox, coccyx and spine. Abdomen, hypochondria, hypogastrium, iliac, idium, inguinal region, liver, spleen and umbilicus. Rectum consists of anus and perineum. Discharges such as stool, perspiration, urine, expectoration are given as the separate chapters. Some conditions like vertigo, cough, chill, fever, vision and hearing are given as separate chapters. The chapters in Kent's repertory are given in the following order. It is very important, like I've written it here, important if you write it down in the paper and if you are, if you are able to remember it very well and good. So the first chapter is the mind and the last chapter as you can see here is generalities. So the first chapter is mind, second vertigo, third head, fourth eye, fifth vision, sixth ear, seventh hearing, eighth nose, ninth face, tenth mouth, eleventh teeth, twelfth is throat, thirteenth is the external throat, fourteen stomach, fifteen abdomen, sixteen rectum, seventeen stool, 18 urinary organs now mind you that the 18 chapter is sub further subdivided into the five chapters which is bladder kidney prostate urethra and urine 19th genitalia male 20th genitalia female 21 larynx and trachea 22 respiration 23 cough 24 expectoration 25 chest 26 back 27th extremities 28 the sleep 29 chill 30th fever Perspiration 31st perspiration 32 skin and 33 which is the last chapter generalities so as you can see we have covered all the 33 chapters and in total 37 chapters of Ken's repertory now let us look into the arrangement of rubrics how are the rubrics arranged all rubrics are arra arranged alphabetically this word is very important alphabetically in all the chapters rubrics are arranged from generals to particular again g to p a rubric starts with a general symptom followed by site, time, modalities and extension. S S T M E is one of the most important, important part of the Kent repertory and the arrangement part like we, well, like we see from other repertories. So the STME part of arrangement is very important in the Kent repertory. We'll look into this later in detail further ahead. A general rubric followed by again sub rubrics. So the, now we look into the STME part in detail. So the first thing which comes up always in arrangement is the sides. So general rubric is followed firstly right side then left. First right then left. In rubrics under head, pain, sides are not given immediately. It is given in separate sub rubric that comes after the parts like occiput, forehead and temples. Second time. So time is again very important. And the different times are daytime, morning, forenoon, noon. Afternoon, evening, twilight, night, midnight, and after midnight. Modalities elements from alternating with modifying factors, aggravation, and amelioration. Extension this is the last sub rubric and found mainly under the pain rubric. Cross references Kent has used cross references in his repertory to convert symptoms into inappropriate rubrics, which have proved helpful in practitioner, which have been proved helpful to practitioners. Such cross-references are found mainly in the mind chapter. There are two kinds of cross-references used in repertory. The first one is synonyms and the second one is similar words. Now let us look into the parts of the Kent repertory. Kent repertory is part. Prefix part. Use of the repertory by Kent. 
how to study the repertory by Kent, how to use the repertory by Kent, repertorization by Emil Tyler and John Weir, hot and cold remedies by Gibson Miller, few cases by Emil Tyler and John Weir, repertory part, preface part, different editions, list of remedies with abbreviations, which is the which abbreviations are the short forms in which the remedies are represented, like Salisha is given in SIL, Belladonna in BELL, similarly. So, text proper and lastly the word index. The third part is suffix part, size of the body and drug affinities by Boninghausen is given here. Relationship of remedies with duration of the action by Gibson Miller. Again, very important. The table which you see in the last of the repertory portion is this one. Now let us look into the special features of repertory. Based on the philosophy of generals to particulars, it contains 648 remedies, medicines in their index, which is more than the other two repertories in use, that is TPB, Therapeutic Pocket Book and BBCR. It has three gradations of medicines, 3 to 1, which is more practical unlike five gradations of Boningosen and Boga. Mind section contains many rubrics and sub-rubrics. It, it also contains qualified symptoms which are very helpful in repertorization. Generalities section is large and elaborate and it contains many rubrics on general modalities and some rubrics on clinical conditions. It contains most of the symptoms related to parts as well as generals. Thus, one who uses repertory rarely needs to refer to any other repertories. Sub-rubrics are placed alphabetically according to the arrangement. Cross-references have been inserted whenever they need, especially in the mind section. Now, let us look into the disadvantage of Kent repertory. At some places, medicines seen under sub-rubrics are not seen in the main rubrics. He criticized TPB for listing medicines under parts, but he himself could not avoid use of them. His repertory contains many clinical rubrics which do not serve the purpose of repertorization and its philosophy. Extremity chapters is the largest chapter in the repertory, but it is least useful for repertorization. There are many similar rubrics which cause confusion for the beginners, thus repertorization becomes difficult for them. Some rubrics, especially the sub-rubrics with similar meaning, appear at different places with slight differences in the drugs. Some general modalities which should be mentioned in generalities also appear in the particulars and the parts. Some nosodes are not represented well, though Kent used them frequently in his practice. There is overgeneralization, especially in the mind section and overparticularization, especially in the extremities chapter, which is not useful for repertorization. Many rubrics suffer from omission of drugs. Many mental rubrics have single remedy, which cannot be used for repertorization. Kent has given much importance to the thermal condition of the patient, but unfortunately, there is no single definite rubric which can guide us in this respect. Now, let us look into the some facts of Kent repertory, which can be come which can come as MCQs. So, the biggest chapter in the Kent repertory is the extremities of 281 pages. The smallest chapter consists of in the hearing, which is of two pages, and the largest rubric is in the mind chapter, which is the rubric of delusions.